Ladies and gentlemen, the first lady of country music, Loretta Lynn. Goodbye, club and clothesline. Goodbye, pots and pans. I'm gonna take a greyhound bus as far as I can. Ain't gonna wash no windows. Ain't gonna scrub no floors. When you realize I'm gone, I'm gonna hear you roar. And you'll say, hey, Loretta, I love you more than I already said. Hey, Loretta, don't leave me alone. Hey, Loretta, where I'm gonna treat you better. Now you brand new overalls, you only come back home. I work my fingers to the bone. We don't hardly speak. All I ever get is a little kiss about it once a week. Liberation, honey, it's gonna start right now. And you'll say, Hey, Loretta, I love you more than my Aubrey said. Hey, Loretta, don't leave me alone. Hey, Loretta, where am I gonna treat you better? Like your brand new overalls, you only come back home. I'll dress up like a movie star, pretty up my hair. No one here is gonna know what I'll be doing last. I'll be swinging. From the chandelier, bouncing off the wall. Instead of loving just one man, I'm a boy love them all. And you'll say, Hey, Loretta, I love you more than my Aubrey said. Hey, Loretta, don't leave me alone. Hey, Loretta, where am I gonna treat you better? Like a brand new overall, you only come back home. And hello, everybody, and welcome to the show tonight. And we would ask you to holler out whatever you wanted to hear. Honey, I said I would ask you, but it wouldn't do any good for me to ask you because a little conductor back here don't know my songs. He only knows three, and he said, well, what if you sing any more than that? You've had it. So see, I won't be able to sing what you holler out. But when it's all over with, come up here, and I'll sing it from right over here at the side of the stage. And this little girl would walk a country mile to find her a good old slow talking country boy. I said, a country boy, I'm about as old fashioned as I can be. So I hope you like on what you see. If you're looking at me, you're looking at country. You don't see no city when you look at me, cause the country is all. Shovel in your hand. If your eyes are on me, you're looking at country. Oh, Bobby. Well, this your country is a little green, but there's a whole lot of country that you ain't seen. I'll show you around if you show me a wedding band. Folks all know where it's at. If you're looking at me, you're looking at country. You don't see no city when you look at me, cause the country is all I am. I love a run of that footy through the old corn fields, and I love that country. 
you. Thank you very much. Right now, I'd like to sing a song that I wrote. And I'd like to tell you a little story about this song before I go into it. I was working in St. Louis, Missouri. And before the show started, this young girl, about 20, 21 years old, come backstage. And she says, Loretta, she was crying. And she says, Loretta, my husband has been stepping out on me. And she says, I tried to get my husband to bring me to this show today. And he wouldn't bring me. And said, he's sitting out there in the third row with his girlfriend. Well, I kind of looked down at this little girl, and she didn't wear no makeup, and she was not fat. She was just kind of pleasingly plump. Really, not, what do you call it? Just not fat. Let's just put it that way. And I looked at the girl that was sitting out there with her husband, and she really looked cheap. She had a lot of makeup on her face, and I thought, well, my goodness, how could he do a thing like this? So I looked down at the little girl, and I said, honey, she ain't woman enough to take your man. I went to my dressing room and I wrote it right there. You called to tell me something You say I ought to know That he don't love me anymore And I'll have to let him go You say you're gonna take him Oh, but I don't think you can Cause you ain't woman enough To take my man But he's in love with me. Well, I don't know where that leaves you. Oh, uh -huh, but I know where I stand. And you ain't woman enough to take my man. A woman like you, that's time a dozen you can find anywhere. But you to get so hell, I have to move up and I'm gonna stand right here. usually have a song for every story. I'll tell you, a story for every song. That's the way I should put it, right? When I first went to Nashville, the no, there ain't one on the way. I just gained five pounds. <laughs> you cool it back there. That don't beat anything I ever seen. You didn't have to bring that up. When I first went to Nashville, Tennessee, the first girl singer I met was Patsy Cline. And we become the best of friends. In 63, Patsy was killed in an airplane crash. I never sang any of her songs after that. And when somebody from the audience would holler out a Patsy Cline number, it would mess up my whole show. Well, last year, I went in, and went in the recording studio, and I did a, an album of Patsy's greatest hits. And I like to never got this thing cut. And I still have a hard time singing them, but I'm going to sing them for you anyway. I 
Bobby shares the secrets of my soul. Standing right beside me, Lord, do everything I've done. Every night he kept me from the cold. Then somewhere in Salinas, Lord, I let him slip away. Searching for a home I hope to find. I dread all my tomorrow's for a single yesterday. Holding Bobby's body close to mine. I promised you all some fiddling, didn't I? Let her go, boy.
shovel coal to make a poor man's dollar. How many of you in here do not know what a holler is? Oh, you do know what a holler is, huh? Great. How many more know what a holler is? You know what one is? I'm going to tell you what a holler is. Holler is a little canyon that comes down between two hills. Down between these two hills is a little stream of water. On the sides of the hills is where we build our cabins. And if there's any level ground, that's where we put our gardens. And the way Butcher Holler got its name is like this. My grandmother was a butcher. My grandfather was a web. And friends are just so happened to be a lot more butchers than there were webs. And the butchers won out. And that's how it got its name. Butcher Holler. We were poor, but we had love. That's the one thing that Daddy made sure of. He shoveled coal to make a poor man's dollar. My Daddy worked all night in the Vandler coal mine. All day long in the field of hoeing corn. Mommy Rock. Everything would start all over come break up morning. They love and raise their kids on a miner's pay. Mommy scrubbed our clothes on a washboard every day. Wife seen her fingers bleed to come make there was no need. Shit small and mommy's understanding. But in the winter time, we'd all get a brand new pair. From a mill order catalog, money made from selling a haul. Daddy always managed to get the money somewhere. But your heart Well, a lot of things have changed in the way back then And it's so good to be back home again Now much less, much of Florence Not one lives here anymore Except for memories of a coal miner's daughter one of you out there tonight feel the same way about your daddy as I did about my daddy. My daddy died in 59. I didn't start singing until 61, so daddy never did get to hear his coal miner's daughter sing on stage. I know all of you have a lot of memories of your daddy. I got a lot of memories of my daddy, too. And I'd like to share just a couple of my memories with you, if you don't mind. I'd like to share the one memory that I remember the most and I love the most is a memory of in the wintertime when the snow was on the ground. The wind was blowing the snow through the cracks of the house. Daddy had sat in front of the old fireplace, and he'd rocked two and three kids at one time. And most of the time, I was one of them kids. In fact, Daddy rocked me right up till I got married. I married very young. I kind of walked out of my daddy's arms into my husband's arms. Then there were times that were quite funny. Memories that I remember of Daddy, and I think one of the funniest ones was Daddy never called me Loretta. It was always Loretti. And I was the only girl till I was nine years old. I was kind of spoiled. I was daddy's pet. I got into everything I was big enough to get into. I climbed trees. I jumped fences. Daddy would always say to me, now, Loretty, if you climb that tree and you fall out and get hurt, you're going to get whooped. Just as sure as I climbed a tree and I fell out and got hurt, 
Daddy would pick me up and spank me before he'd ever look to see if I was dead or alive. They just don't make them like our daddies anymore, do they? There just ain't no way. I was a much more than a baby. I thought he was a bad You're sitting out there right now saying to yourself, how in the world did she ever get out of Butcher Holler? Am I right? That's what I thought. This is how I got out of Butcher Holler. I went to school in a little one-room schoolhouse. Right in the middle of the schoolroom sat a great big old arm pot belly stove. And during the summertime, some of the kids was playing in the schoolhouse yard, and they had broke out some of the window panes, and it was really getting cold. The teacher says, girls, we're going to have to come up with something to raise some money to put these window panes back in the schoolhouse. Well, we come up with a pie supper. How many of you have ever been to a pie supper? All right. How many of you don't know what a pie supper is? Well, I'm fixing to tell you. She says, now girls, all of you that are big enough, you bake your own pie. And whoever the boy is that buys your pie can help you eat this pie and walk you home. Right then, I started getting ready for the big pie supper. We had our pie supper one week later. The young fellow that she got the bit off the pies I'd never met. He'd just gotten out of the army. He looked like a little, to uh, little toy soldier. Looked to be about 16 or 17, but of course we know he had to be much older than that. He bid the pies off that night, and when it come to my pie, he bought it. After the pie supper was over with, we sat down to eat her pie. I'd made a bad mistake. I'd baked my pie with salt instead of sugar. 13 years old, my first pie, and I baked on that thing for a week. Well, he walked me home. That was on the 10th day of December. On the 25th day of December, he bought me a little rubber doll for Christmas. On the 10th day of January, we got married. We moved all the way out of Butcher Holler, clear out to the state of Washington. The next year for Christmas, I got a real doll. And the next year for Christmas, I got another. And the next year, another one. And the next year. By the time I was 17, I had four. And then they started coming in pairs. <laughs> and there's been one on the way ever since. Doing a brand new dance And the White House social season She'll be glittering and gay The 
here in Edmonton, the rain is a-falling. The faucet is a-dripping and the kids are bawling. One of them is toddling and one is a-crawling. And one's on the way. I'm glad the Rockwell Welch just signed a million-dollar pack. And Debbie's here working up a brand-new act. A real fun game to play. But here in the Pika, the screen doors are banging. The coffee's boiling over and the wash needs a hand. One wants a cookie and one wants a change in it. One's on the way. You're calling from a bar? Get away from that. No, not you, honey. I was talking to the baby. Wait a minute, honey. The doorbell. Honey, could you stop at the market and... Hello. Hello. Well, I'll be... The girls in New York City, they all march for women's live. Better homes and gardens shows a modern way to live. The pill may change your world tomorrow, but... Meanwhile, today, here in Edmonton, the flies are buzzing. The dog is a barking and the floor needs a scrubbing. One needs a spanking and one needs a hugging, Lord. One's on the way. One evening, my husband come home from work, and he said, Loretta, I've been listening to the radio, and there's girl singers that's out there singing on the radio that's making money that can't sing any better than you can. He said, I think I'm going to try to do something with your singing. Well, I really didn't know what he had in mind, because he'd never heard me sing, except walking in the house and catching me rock, rocking the babies to sleep. He said, there's a little country band that plays not too far from here on Saturday night. Said they play for a little country dance. Says, Saturday night, we'll go listen to them. Tickle me to death, because with four kids, you don't get to go nowhere. Saturday night come along, and he got me a babysitter. My first big night out. My first big dance. We got to the dance hall, and got just a little too much to drink. Got a little bit loud. Went up to the bandstand and hollered, Hey, next to Kitty Wells, I've got one of the greatest country girl singers here in the world. And said, I want you to let her get up and sing. Friends, I took off running. I heard one of the guys in the band say, we don't let nobody get up and sing here. Well, as the night went on, it got a little worse, and a little worse, and a little worse. I aggravated every one of them to death. Finally, one of them looked down at him and said, now listen, if this girl can sing as good as you say she can, you bring her over Wednesday night. So we tape a half-hour country music show, and we play it back on the radio on Saturday. He said, well, we'll put her right on the radio. They figured it, forget it. Lord, I was hoping so. He didn't. Wednesday night come along when he come in from work and looked at me and said, are you ready? And I said, no. He said, get that way. And I did. We went over to the musician's home and they come to the door. We knocked on the door and they come to the door and looked down at us and looked like they said to their self, gee, what have we got ourselves into? Well, one of them looked at me and said, what do you want to sing? 
only knew one song all the way through. And I said, there he goes. He says, what key do you do that in? And I said, I don't know. He hit a key and I hung on. The next morning, they come over at my house and they hired me to sing with them every Saturday night for five dollars. I knew I was going to get rich. I saved all my money up and I bought me a white hat, white boots, a black skirt with big long white fringe, a black shirt with big old red roses. Annie Oakley would have been ashamed to have stood up beside of me. I strapped my guitar around my neck and I headed for Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sure if my husband would have ever dreamed the music business would have taken us away from each other so much, so long at a time, he didn't ever ask me to sing that first song. I know you read articles every now and then where he gets out, gets a little too much to drink, but he gets lonely. He stays home and does all the farming, takes care of all the kids, all the kids' problems or tries to, and if you've got kids, you know that's impossible. There ain't no way. So when he gets lonesome, he gets drunk. And he gets lonesome every night. So one day I wrote him a song. Called him up about three o'clock in the morning and I said, honey, I wrote you a song. Which I made a mistake by calling him up at that time of night. He said, well, what is it? And I said, don't come home with drinking with loving on your mind. That's what it is. <laughs> The thought that I'd be waking up when you came home last night You've been out with all the boys and you went to the pad time Liquor and love, they just don't mix, leave the bottle or me behind And don't come home or drink up with lovers on your mind A shovel coal to make a poor man's dollar. In a cabin on a hill in Butcher Hall. We were poor, but we had love. That's the one thing that daddy made sure of. A shovel coal to make a poor man's 